Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do a little refresher on AutoGrid and the latest version currently out, which I believe is 1.7. Um, as you may all know, I'm a big fan of AutoPlay and AutoGrid and pretty much every plugin from Altar Wisdom because they are very well thought out um, regarding the workflow, especially for Sidetrans producers who rely heavily on chopping audio, arranging them, and trying to get a, some kind of a question-answer thing going on. Um, of course, there are other genres that, that uh, uses this approach, um, but I, I've, I've seen it very much in, in Sidetrans, and I do, I've done it uh, a lot myself. And... Um, with the latest update, there are some new features that is, I think they have been overlooked. Um, because if you, like the original auto grid, I actually have the, have it saved. Let's see if I can find it somewhere. Um, if we make a comparison on, on the new features. Uh, so if we go to auto grid and then let's take Is it an audio effect? Yeah, it's an audio effect. So let's let's like take the very first version, place it here, and have a little comparison. Um, so this is uh, the one point one, and what's new is besides the layout of the actual plugin, is that we have something here that says seed new freeze, and then we have set and a random number, <laughs> uh, which is basically the seed number. Um, I'll have, leave a link in the description on if you want to read more about what seed actually means in terms of uh, programming. Uh, and then we have something called loop every, and then just a set of numbers here. Um, these guys means that uh, this is an eighth note, quarter note, half a bar, a bar, two bars, four bars, eight bars, 16 bars. And then you have the um, uh, the sends and routing, which we're also gonna, I'm gonna give a brief explanation of that is. Now this is what I'm going to focus on because this is the actual power of using AutoGrid uh, with this update, according to me. If we compare it to the first one, the first one was actually, I believe it was defaulted to this, to this setting, as we can see here. So what Altar actually has done is he has unlocked the, the seed engine for us to manipulate and play around with. We can even open up the history and see what seeds we're playing and we can reuse them um, by copying this number and pretty much entering it here. So we have this seed playing now. Um, but enough about that. Um, so that's, that's how it was before. Uh, it's still an awesome plugin, but it's a little bit chaotic, um, considering we don't have any control of the randomness happening, uh, except for the probabilities and the timing, but not when stuff are actually going to play uh, and how they're going to play. So back to the latest update. Um, what makes this so useful, first of all, is that we have more control, which I already mentioned. Um, however, um, my workflow is usually that I create a patch, I use autoplay and to generate the MIDI, and then I maybe record some automation as I have done in all these patches. Um, and then I just record it into audio, and then I chop it up using autogrid. Um, or sometimes I do it manually. It depends on the situation. But if we have a look in the patches, we're just gonna have a quick walkthrough. It's, um, three presets using uh, Mute Productions from his latest pack, Forest Sai. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for this one as well. So we got three of those, and I picked them because I thought they sounded good together. So this one is called Dogon. Then we have the Fiend lead. And then I created one myself using one of my new tables from Sci Tables Volume 3 which I'll also leave a link in the description where you can get them. And all of these four patches 
they create random, uh, what you call it, random, uh, random MIDI sequencing. So if we have a play, let me just turn off auto grid because it's going to gate it uh, at the moment. Let's see, auto grid, yeah, send it to the group. Sorry about this. There we go. Okay. So the only thing that is actually not random is the filter cutoff because that's a automation I recorded myself. But the MIDI, actual MIDI sequencing is, is completely random. Same goes with patch two. Patch three. Also completely random. And same goes with input four. And the idea I usually have is like, okay, I've got some random stuff going on. I'm getting inspired, blah, 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 blah. I'm getting some content. And then I have this, then, then you come to the point where you need to arrange everything, right? You have to like chop it up and you have to make sense out of everything. And that is a fucking pain in the ass, excuse my language, but uh, I really hate doing that job manually. Um, it's time consuming, it's not that inspiring, and it's just like, you get stuck. And especially if, when you're streaming, <laughs> um, people get bored quite quickly, um, at least I do, because you can you hear the guy replaying the stuff over and over and over again in order to make sense out of everything, and then you just get bored and you just leave it. I want to work quite quick and efficient at the same time get inspired uh, on moving on. So this is where AutoGrid comes into play because it is so valuable for kickstarting this chopping up and arranging stuff uh, for me and creating new sequences out of something that you already have in your productions. So let's set this up. Um, first of all, mark all of the channels that you want to route into AutoGrid. Mark them all, go into the uh, uh, output section over here and make them go to the sense only. And if we solo AutoGrid now, you're gonna hear that we're not going to hear anything. And that's the actual point. Uh, let's just solo this. But, you see how they turned into blue um, blue meters over here. That means they're being sent to the send channels. Um, and then you go into AutoGrid and you choose the inputs over here, the corresponding input. So we have nine input one, 10 input two, 11 input three, 12 input four. And just to make it easy, we have one input, or we have input one, input two, three, and four. And then you just map it, route it to the corresponding channel. So nine input one goes into input one, 10 input two goes into input two, 11 input three goes into input three, and 12 input four goes into input four. And then there's some stuff that you want to tweak if you're doing the same approach as I do. Um, it's not mandatory, but I recommend it. Because um, AutoGrid has this length over here, which basically determines when, for example, input one is playing, when, like, how long is it going to play, um, depending on what we have set here. I always set this to 100% for both of them. And I always set 100% for this as well, because well, it, it, you, can, you can have something play in the background and gate on top of it, but we're not gonna go through that for this example. Um, because since we're already having stuff being played in input one through two, three, one to four, this one is already determining the note length since we're having random gating playing over here. So there's no need to do it on AutoGrid as well. What AutoGrid's uh, mission is only to determine when one of these inputs are going to play. Uh, it's not gonna determine 
the length of each each time it's being played as well. So yeah, that's why I've always in this particular example set it to 100%. And let's have a listen uh, to how it sounds with the kick and bass now. So this is cool. It's all handy dandy and it's, you know, you're getting some random stuff playing and they're alternating between each other. You get some kind of question and answer thing, but it's quite chaotic. Um, and it's a pain in the ass to record it out and pick out the sequence that you like and sequence it manually. With the new update, as I said before, we can freeze what's going on actually. So let's try that for a second. I'm going to hit the X over here. And you're going to notice that this number isn't going to change anything. But however, we're only having input 4 playing now. And that's because it's repeating the sequence every 8 notes. So it doesn't have enough time. The loop that it's, that, that's frozen doesn't have any time in order to change to another input. So we need to up this a little bit. So let's try something around a beat. It's still playing the same one. Let's go for half a bar. And this particular seed lets this one play for quite some time. Let's try a bar. Now we're getting some alternations. actual timing of when a specific input is playing is always the same here but since everything else is random you're still getting a variation of it uh, let's try with so it repeats it's like a loop every two bars We basically, we could have done this manually, but it would be such a pain in the ass to do it. Um, and you know, you can like lengthen or shorten the actual uh, time, like you have a time allocation here. Um, you can lower this or raise it, and each of the inputs gonna have some, gonna play for a longer duration before it changes to something else, if I'm not mistaken. So let's try that out. Let's multiply by four. So every quarter note is gonna be a bar, I think. And every eighth is gonna be half a bar and so on. You can just pay attention to this little, um, this little window here, and it's gonna tell you um, the length of, of, of it. Take away this guy. Turn it to zero. So now it's only half, one bar and a quarter note. It's alternating in between because we didn't have any half bar in there. So this one was never playing. For that particular seed. Let's take away that guy. So that's how you can play around and manipulate those within that same seed, everything. Like you, you need to understand that this seed has random values for each parameter inside of Autogrid at this given moment. It's, it's, it's the same, everything. And you can manipulate that particular sequence with all the other parameters here, which is pretty awesome. Um, let's, let's 
try and pan one of these guys. And I noticed that this guy is playing a little bit not that often. What we can do, we can make use of the send return channels here, for example. So here we have the send targets. This means that um, what's coming in from input one, two, and three, and four can be sent to somewhere else. So let's say I have a I have like a for example a dotted eighth delay in here. And I only want to send the four, uh, whenever time, every time input four is playing, I want to send it into the delay. Let's see how that sounds. So these, that's the send and return section of the new update. The, re, the reason why this is useful is because we're working with gating. This means that if you have a delay playing on input one, for example, if you have a delay inside your patch or on the channel, that delay is also going to get del uh, is also going to get um, gated out of AutoGrid because it takes the input from this channel, right? So if if you have a delay here in the signal chain, that's gonna get muted whenever Autogrid decides to mute it. So that's why he has created these sends and return routings. And I think it actually was a feedback uh, from, from one of the Autogrid users that said that, hey, is this possible? And he delivered. So that's really, really nice. Um, what more is it to show? Um, we have, we've gone through the seed, so let's take a little rep repetition. You can generate a new seed here by pressing this button. You can take off the freeze by disabling it. If it's gray, it's, it's generating a new, a new seed every time. If, you, if, it's, um, if it's on, if it's yellow, it's on. So then, then you have frozen the seed, so now it's not gonna change. Then you can change how often it's gonna loop and uh, then you have the note probability. So let's have a new seed here, for example. What does a note probability do? A note probability do it basically determines how often AutoGrid is going to spit out something. And as I said before, this is also tied to the seed number. So at a hundred percent, we will hear the sequence at its fullest. When it's at fifty percent, we're going to hear it half of it. And when if it's twenty five only a quarter and so on and so forth. At zero, we're not gonna hear anything because then we're basically muting all the, all the everything. So nothing is coming out. However, if we start dialing this up,
As you can see, like every four bars, it's placed up the, on the grid, as expected. So let's move this aside, and then you can maybe have one, like like an, a variation where it's playing half, like fifty percent. But in that case, maybe I don't want the, maybe I only want like send returns for these two, for example. That's not going to be captured in the recording, but it's just to give some feel for it, so you can, you know, get in the mood. like a variation where it's 50% here of that particular sequence that was 29 I think let's move these guys aside let's just rearrange it a little bit and then we have something that is 75% for example um, and same here, I don't want any sense now. Then record again. There's one thing to note, sometimes there's a little bit of lag, I, I believe, so to be sure you can start the recording a little bit earlier in order to really make it get everything from the start. Um, I'm not going to do it for this in this particular case, just for demonstration. Let's just move it over here. And that one was 75%. You know, this is just like for generating some nice ideas. And then we have one at 100% when it's uh, revealed fully. And let's, I'll demonstrate it so it's, so you can see that it's gonna start on the grid if you ever encountered that before. And I'll fix it. And that's the 100% version. 
And then you could technically chop it up manually or you can use this one for like one part of the track bouncing off other sounds and then you make it more intense you build that classic staircase type where you just like you know go downwards and then back up again um so yeah that's basically the rundown of autogrid and how to actually use it uh, and co to control your your uh, chaotic <laughs> sequences and when to play them and of course like you can stack up effects afterwards you can have maybe some stutter effects going on that loops to even make it more cohesive and more interesting um you could even do it before this um you could even have melodies and have melodies playing off each other you can have drum samples drum loops um you name it it's really up to you on how you're going to use it in the end um this is just my workflow of using autogrid and the more I use it, the more I love it. Um, and I thought I would share this workflow tips since I know a lot of people is like, but why are you going to use autograde? It's like do it manually and like you have more control. Well, yeah, sure. I might have more control by doing everything by hand. But when I work doing the chopping manually, um, I really get tired of it really quickly. It's boring as hell. And I like to work with something the computer has generated for me because I want the computer to do the hard work for me. I don't want to do it uh, myself. And this is like an excellent way of doing it. Uh, and it fits my workflow really, really well. So if you picked up Autogrid before and you really didn't like it, I highly suggest you to try it again using the new C generation engine um, and freeze it and have a play around with it, tweak the stutter probability, play around with these guys, um, play around with the panning. You know, you can map LFOs to the panning, um, play around with the inputs over here that maybe you introduce like the first input after a while into your sequence. Um, like the possibilities are pretty much endless and once you understand how to use this thing it's very 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 powerful um, I can't stress that enough so yeah that's basically a little refresher on autograd and what you can do with the new update I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get it uh, I'll also leave a link in the description where you can get my tables and mute productions preset packs if you haven't checked those out so Thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you found it very inspiring and uh, see you in the next one.